Okay, so let's continue the adventure with the 1998 PC that we managed to put together in the last episode, which I strongly suggest you to look at before continuing with this episode. It will make much more sense. I have um, formatted the hard drive here and um, ScanDisk is uh, doing some additional checks here to see that um, the surface of the disk is okay and that it's enough space free here to install Windows 98 SE, which by the way is the Swedish version because I couldn't find an English version for you guys. So I mean the worst thing that can happen is that you learn some Swedish and that will be good for your your um, I don't know Minecraft uh, skills and we're greeted here with a welcome screen and it's uh, doing its business here Windows 98 was the operating system was the first operating system that I actually liked from Microsoft it had um, a more robust feeling to it and it only crashed maybe one time a day or so and I strongly advise you to um, use the default folder here for Windows otherwise some software might get a bit cranky and die on you anyway I did a lot of professional work on Windows 98 I wrote a lot of code and uh, produced some nice graphics in Photoshop I always selected the um, customize mode here to um, check some additional components for Windows that I like to have and you just double click here and you find the hidden gems here. Um, and my screen is doing this black business here and I think it's a capacitor that has, you know, is at least thinking of passing away. Let's select the hyper terminal here. And um, yeah, so anyway, um, it was a good version and I ran Windows 98 for a long time. And so did other people as well. There was one uh, funny thing about it, when you were developing software you had this uh, kind of rich uh, graphical user interface with a lot of drop down menus and toolbars and each of these um, small buttons for example on the toolbar would count as a window and uh, if you um, had more than 256 uh, windows on the screen all the icons would go away and uh, they would basically become black so it would look like crap and you had to reboot the machine This version of Windows also had Internet Explorer bundled with it. And uh, that caused a lot of problems for Bill Gates and company there at Microsoft. As they were pushing the limits of their monopoly. And uh, he had to do some um, serious time in court. Okay, this is um, the local stuff here, and it's ready to copy files. By the way, I got some questions on Reddit and in the comments and by email, and uh, one of them were, why did you put an additional uh, serial port, parallel port card in um, the ISA slot when you have it on the motherboard? And it's an easy answer, I just need more ports because sometimes I have the, these cranky old EEPROM programmers or old, old MCU, ancient stuff programming shit that really needs uh, true ports. And by true ports I mean you can't run these USB to serial port or USB to uh, parallel ports uh, devices because they simply won't work 100%. So that's why I, I, you can never have too much communication ports. 
when you are working with these old machines. Now you always have to press the reboot now button before Windows uh, does it automatically. Otherwise you lose against the machine and you know some that's not so manly and it's uh, definitely not good for your for your discipline of the, um, the machine. You need to teach it that you are in charge and um, so it doesn't you know start to run away from you or crash do st stupid things like that. And we need to remember to um, uh, change the order of the, the boot order after we have finished the Windows installation. So it starts from the floppy drive and then goes to the hard drive, to the boot sector there. Anyway, so that was one question and um, I really like and enjoy your comments. So please start to comment more if you, if you like to. Comment underneath the videos and um, you know, spread the words about this little thing we have going here and uh, maybe we can grow and it's, it's good for all of us because it will keep me motivated, motivated to continue with this kind of video. I will not show you my product key here because if it leaks, nobody's going to buy Windows 98 anymore, you know? So, continue here for 18 minutes and it's updating the driver database here. And uh, another question is uh, were um, these components, which of the components were, were, were the hardest one to find? And I, I actually, they're not hard to find. You can just go out and kind of beg someone for it in a forum and someone will send you some things. PC stuff is generally pretty inexpensive compared to Commodore stuff, um, for example. So it's pretty easy to just go on eBay and, and buy it for a couple of bucks. Now it's trying to identify plug and play hardware and plug and play is really just um, that for example let's say we have a network card in this case it's a Freecom and um, it will have a hardware ID in its um, chip that Windows can read and let's say the hardware ID is 1234 and Windows will check for 1234 in its driver database, its plug and play database. If it's fine, if Windows finds 1234, it knows which driver to uh, install. And uh, this is plug and play more or less. And if there's no match, you have to download the driver yourself and um, point it out from the device manager. I show you later because uh, there are some cards here that are not plug and play. This Windows version was also the first Windows with Windows Update built into it, which of course was uh, very nice. You could update the operating system by the internet. To sum it up, it was a more functional release of Windows 95, basically. And you had the underlying DOS that you could access and you could still run your old uh, favorite PC software for DOS or, and uh, games, most of them at least. And we're approaching a uh, reboot here again. And of course, don't let the machine win. And uh, the camera is trying to find the focus every time the color changes. So that's why you see this kind of seizure, <laughs> seizures here. And this moment takes too long time here. So uh, what we need to do is um, reset the computer and uh, enter the BIOS to um, tell the BIOS to look for the floppy drive and then the um, hard drive and uh, we should be okay I guess Just press the delete button here and we entered the BIOS and uh, if I remember where there you have the boot sequence here instead of CD-ROM first we take the standard procedure here and uh, save and yes and uh, there should be no more problems
And BIOS is of course the first thing that runs on a computer that uh, kind of gathers everything, the hardware, and acts like a layer between uh, the hardware and um, the operating system that then continues to boot and um, take it one level higher. So you're actually sitting on a large bunch of software when you are looking at this uh, video here on YouTube. And it's continuing to um, trying to ad identify the plug and play. Now the date was a bit off here, so um, let's just quickly fix that. And it's fixing the control panel and uh, software on the start menu. Windows help and uh, some old DOS program things. And uh, some other obscure crap in the background. Now, this takes some time. So I'm gonna speed this up and just uh, look at the drums. It's faster than the drummer in Metallica. Look at the drums there, whoa. So we are approaching the end here. And uh, reboot, manually of course. And we should now see Windows 98 for the first time. I must have installed Windows 98 hundreds of times in a lot of different businesses but also privately because the whole thing would just sync sometime. You installed the wrong driver or updated the wrong file and the whole operating system were, I mean it was beyond repair. So you just trusted your backups and uh, did a clean install of Windows 98 and everything was fine and dandy after that. Now having a network card and uh, getting a network address which I hope we are going to get from the router. Take some time. If everything goes okay here the Freecom Ethernet card will have been identified by the plug and play and um, we will have a have an IP address here now it found my Philips screen here and um, the S3 card in this um, computer is not uh, in the plug and play database so we need to download the driver for the graphics card it will be a default driver installed now the Windows default driver for this graphic card and the resolution will be crap As uh, you can see soon here, we are at the lowest resolution, but we're up and running and very functional. Welcome to Windows 98. Let's on my screen again. It drives me nuts. Let's close this shit and let's not show it again. Okay, so the settings for the screen is uh, like 16 colors, 640, and uh, there's nothing we can do about that unless we go online and find this driver. This is the device manager, and we can see that the, the graphics card has the default standard PC, PCI. VGA driver, the generic Windows driver for this and every card that it finds. 
and the network card, the Freecom fast Ethernet link, Ether link is okay. And when you guys were not watching, I um, kind of uh, ignored Windows request for rebooting because um, the network card will need it. So let's just reboot fast again. And uh, we should now be able to go online and you can see the web looks like crap, but it's working. The news here, it's very warm and hot and dry in Sweden this summer. And that's basically everything the news are talking about right now. And we can check the IP address here by running ipconfig here in DOS and you can see we have the 0 0.10 address here so it's fine I found some old um, driver pages here that worked in this uh, crappy browser that barely worked in the 90s um, and let's try to download a graphics driver here and see if we can do something about this claustrophobic feeling I have here and uh, we don't have any way to unzip these files because the, there were no built-in zip and unzip functionality in Windows 98 so we have to download WinZip for Windows 95 A lot of softwares here. Oh, let's not go there. Okay. Install WinSip here, which of course was the default program to have on uh, Windows back in the days. And uh, it looks fine. So. Let's unzip this um, beast here. I'm not sure if it has a setup file or if we have to go through the device manager here. Looks like we have to do the device manager thing here. That's just an icon. So let's go there and uh, do this manually. Put a driver here and update driver and then show a list and show all hardware and we have a disk so browse for that and uh, there we have the driver file and we can see it's an engineering release of this S3 driver version and Windows will update its information database with the drivers drivers so let's wait for that and continue reboot we're back up again and uh, let's see if we can change the settings here and already yeah we have true color and we can just go by 1024 and uh, phew get rid of this horrible resolution and we can fit some more things, more stuff on our screen now. And we have more colors and everything looks better. So we continue with the creative driver here for the sound card. There's nothing exciting about this, just a setup program. Adjust the screen a bit here. identifying all the different parts that the driver needs to find and I'm missing some files here for the MIDI thing so I'm just gonna skip it because I'm too tired to go and uh, 
solve this right now. I really don't care. Let's just skip it and uh, jump everything that is giving us a headache here. Another question I got more frequently were um, question about my selection of the video card for this system, the graphics card, the S3 card. And uh, why did you choose this boring card when you could have something more with more horsepower and you can play it, for example, Unreal? I'm gonna address it. I'm just gonna change the colors here because I like to have it exactly as I had it back in the days. I think I had this, not the bubbles here. <laughs> uh, I had this kind of color and then I had, um, oh, let's put this one. So we know it's Windows 98, so we are up to date and uh, you know. Yeah, so the video card here is just fine. It will play Unreal, which was the question. It said, you, you, could, you can't play Unreal on this. There's no way you can play Unreal on this graphics card. I'm gonna show you. It's gonna work just fine, don't worry. I know what I'm doing. Let's install Unreal. Which uh, you will see it has really, really advanced and, and beautiful graphics for being a game from the 90s. And when I first saw this game, I said, oh, holy crap it was such a big leap in um, what you were used to and uh, it was really like okay now how much better can it get i mean it was really really that kind of feeling it had a great gameplay and um, the whole packaging was really good and the company who made this game was called epic mega game it was like a collaboration between different companies i guess So let's run this uh, game, Unreal here, and um, you will see this uh, beautiful intro here, the f uh, I think it was called the flyby scene here, and you can see it's running really really smooth on this S3 card here. These kind of graphics in the 90s were just like, what the heck is going on? You even had this uh, like water effect here. You could see the water move and it looked like water. And um, all this combined made it like the coolest experience I had with the game back in the 90s. Let's play in medium and um, the gameplay is pretty good. You are in a spaceship. You don't know what happened, and you just wake up, confused. And um, I'm going to try to find your way through this maze here of uh, horrible things. And uh, there's a lot of dead bodies everywhere on this uh, spaceship, as you can see. And um, just look at the details here. It's really cool. The other lamp just uh, fell down, and uh, you have this kind of spooky misty corridors here where you don't know what's gonna happen behind the next turn here if i remember correctly you end up in a big control room here where you're supposed to find some kind of uh, machine with a stick that opens the door or something like that so i'm not gonna play this game you can just see some uh, let's play version of this game and i recommend everybody to try it that likes old computers from the 90s Anyway, it was a successful installation and uh, execution of this game. What on earth will we do now? Let's investigate this hardware. I promised you I would make kind of a replica of my own setup and this was a missing piece that I had to find. It's a TV card and you can see them. It even had the package here. In pretty decent condition and you can see all the nice graphics from the 90s in all its glory nice fonts and all these things and inside the box we have um, some stuff here 
the card of course that you just saw it's in this bag And it's brand new. I don't think it has ever been used. It looks like new anyway. Just look at that finish on that card. Some hardware porn for you. These can be bought dead cheap because uh, nobody wants them anymore. But I remember I thought it was so cool because I could have the TV and radio on when I was programming. And this is an IR port in the bottom there for the infrared receiver. That's also in the box. This is a manual with um, it's a really ugly interface, but it was really cool back in the 90s, I promise you. And of course you had your uh, drivers on CD, which was very cool also. CD was really, really cool. And the remote looks like uh, a good remote. Even as the default batteries. Not leaking and working after, I don't know, many years. And this is the infrared receiver that goes in the back of the card. And look at that guy, he's very happy. He's holding his uh, strange video camera there. And uh, somehow he has a DVD or something. DVD with all his uh, nice movies he made with his girlfriend. And this, my friends, is my IDE SIP100 drive. I used this so much back in the days. The SIP format is like a bigger, thicker version of uh, the floppy drive, the floppy disks. Other versions came after with a greater capacity, but this was um, at least one of my most used things. I put graphics there and uh, all sorts of things that you could share with your buddies or uh, other companies. Because it was a hard time downloading 100 megabytes and even harder uploading 100 megabytes back in the days when you had this bandwidth limitations on the internet. This is how it looked, the zip case, IBM formatted of course. And this is the zip disk itself. And you just push it in here like a floppy and it start to blink a bit and um, Windows will recognize this as a removable, removable device and um, you have your uh, 98.355 megabytes available and you could just eject it like a CD-ROM and it would pop out. It's a really cool thing from the 90s and this is all I have for you today. Thank you for watching and please uh, subscribe and like if you like this video and uh, send some comments for me down if there's something you want to know or complain about. And please spread the word. Bye for now.